would like to welcome everyone to our uh, evening here. This is the 29th annual SAVE Awards Ceremony. So we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, you will be getting something in the mail. I don't know if any of you got it yet. We just sent it out. So you probably didn't receive it yet. You know how the mail is slower. But you will get a booklet that has the whole award ceremony in it with each of the people that are getting the awards, et cetera. And um, we've been we've been in this organization for about 35 years and we love what we do. And like Sharon said, this is the most wonderful thing that we do every year is to honor people for all they've done. So I would uh, like to welcome you all tonight. And I know there's a lot of different kinds of people here from all different walks of life. So this is the energizing part of the EV of the evening. Uh, I would like to turn this over to my um, our treasurer, uh, David, who will sh share with you a little bit about what the SAVE organization is all about. So David. Is he? Is he on, John? I'm I'm unmuted now. Okay. As you can see from the screen, uh, we have a number of different things that SAVE has been involved in. Uh, I hope some of you have come to our bi-monthly lectures. If not, I would encourage you to attend. Some of them are done on a Zoom session, so you don't even have to leave your comfy sofa. You can still gain a lot of knowledge uh, from the excellent speakers that we have. We provide scholarships to underserved youth for science camps and also uh, special environmental awards at the Northwest District Science Day, usually held at UT. We also present award, environmental awards tonight as we're experiencing at our annual award night. Next, next slide. We have a number of corporate sponsors the corporate sponsors are people who feel the same way we do, who join in our mission and support our organization financially as well. You can see all the names of those individual corporations there. And we are constantly in search of new corporate members. If uh, anyone knows of an organization that would like to continue in this same effort and mission as you're seeing tonight, we would welcome any of these people to uh, contact us and join in our corporate membership panel. Next. Are there any more, John? No, David, that's it. Okay. okay. So that's kind of an overview, a quick, a quick overview of what we are. And hopefully uh, you will understand a little bit more about all of us and what we're doing as you see the, the awards that are presented tonight and see the caliber of the people that we chose to be recipients of those awards. And I'll turn the Our, program over to Sister Sharon. Okay, thank you, Dave. Um, the first award that we have tonight is our David and Janice Sandys Eco Service Award. Uh, this we are giving to Ashley Ray and Mindy Dawes. A uh, sister, Rosine, will give us a little bit of an introduction to these two people. Ashley, are you online? Yes, I just got home, so I'm here. Okay. <laughs> uh, Ashley uh, and Mindy are daughter and mother, and uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what they do, and then they can tell you about themselves, too. But um, they have helped us with uh, an event that we have at Lord called uh, or save called Santa events, Santa and the animal event. And these two women are very much into animals, very, very much. And they have participated in the Santa event for as long as we've had it. And Ashley, even in other events, because she was a, a, a graduate of Lourdes University. Ashley has been an early child educator now as a result of her training. Uh, she is working in Auburn Hills, Michigan and has been a teacher there for 10 years. She received her master's from Adrian College, working at the Lourdes Life Lab throughout five years at Lourdes, and then grew a love for teaching her students. And she taught them, teaches them in compassion and respect 
for the planet and for the animals in the plant world as, as such. She works to protect and save wildlife in her area and volunteers her time for environmental efforts whenever possible. So Ashley, would you like to say something first and then I'll call in your mother. Um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and say that we absolutely love coming to the um, Santa and the Animal and Santa and St. Francis and the Animals events. Um, we often bring lots of different animals, and um, I love using that as a teaching tool for young kids and adults to often learn something new about some different kinds of animals and how they are in our environment, and um, hopefully spread the word. And I like to do that in my teaching as well as just, you know, find ways to share uh, my love for the environment and build that in my kids as well. Thank you. And now your mother, Mindy Dawes of Maumee is the proud mother, is your a proud mother of this child here, not a child, young woman now. She uh, supported Ashley through all her many activities at Lourdes, including Life Lab summer camps and special events that we had on the campus. She's an avid lover of animals, humanity, and the environment, and has volunteered for many, many groups like 4-H, American Red Cross, Humane Society, 577 The Foundation, and Assistance Dogs of America. She's a retired volunteer EMT firefighter for Richfield Township Fire Department and volunteers as an advocate for victims of domestic violence. Uh, Mindy began, oh, she currently serves as the board member and treasurer of the Harry Hughes Youth Equestrian Center in Swanton, Ohio. She began visiting nursing homes, libraries, and uh, special events with all her pets. And uh, she recently shared her rescue rabbit, Max, the biggest rabbit you've ever seen for years <laughs> with children's programs, including at the Life Lab and holiday programs. Max sadly passed away this year but Mindy is now training her border collie puppy, Obi, to make a similar vote or uh, role. So Mindy, would you tell us something about yourself, please? I'm just really happy to be here and happy to help in any way I can. And, you know, I share the ideal that um, we've got to preserve our environment and we've got to preserve our earth and we've got to expose our children to animals and the responsibility that comes with it. And I'm just really happy that I've had the opportunities to do that throughout the years. And thank you very much. <laughs> well, congratulations to both of you. We're very happy to present you with this award. Thank you. And I'd like to turn this now over to um, Nancy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can bring him next, right? Yep. Okay. Yes. Welcome, everyone. It's great to have everyone with us tonight. My name is Nancy Simon, and I have the honor of introducing Marky Miller, who is SAVE's Eco Friend of the Environment awardee. Marky is the volunteer coordinator, you've probably heard of her, of Toledoans for Safe Water, which is the grassroots community led group that petitioned, campaigned for, and helped pass the Lake Erie Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is the first law on settler colonial land to recognize the legal rights of a specific eco ecosystem. The petitioners for the Charter Amendment collected 10,500 signatures by hand. They endured and overcame several attempts to derail the initiative and earned the right to place the issue before Toledo voters in February of 2019. Despite the resistance from the state, corporate entities, and an expensive opposition campaign funded by oil and gas, the citizens of Toledo voted in favor of recognizing the long ignored rights of Lake Erie and her right to exist, flourish, and thrive. Although the Lake Erie Char Bill of Rights continues to be challenged, the power lives on in the people of Toledo who push back on policies that protect corporate privilege over nature's rights. February 26, 2019 is an, is an historic day for Toledo, Lake Erie, and the rights of nature. 
Marky serves as the spokesperson and organizer for the Lake Erie Bill of Rights. Her hope is to advance the global rights of the nature movement. Our community is incredibly fortunate to have Marky's empowering, organizing energy and focus. Congratulations, Marky. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, thank you so, so much. I'm truly honored by the recognition and thankful on behalf of my group, Toledoans for Safe Water and my fellow Lake Erie advocates. Um, Toledo really is home to a group of just fearless activists when it comes to Lake Erie. And I'm really grateful to be part of that group. I'm immensely proud of what this community accomplished through the Lake Erie Bill of Rights and honored to serve not only as spokesperson, but as a volunteer organizer towards a more resilient environment and empowered community. Our local efforts really did make global waves and propelled the rights of nature movement into the mainstream. And we might not have a traditional win on the books, but when it comes to the courts, we know that our laws don't change until our culture does and our culture doesn't move until we do. And so nevertheless, we are planting seeds and we will continue to work towards the change that we want. And now more than ever, it's time for unapologetic and uncompromising dedication and action towards a sustainable environment, a true democracy. And while that sounds extremely daunting, it becomes more and more attainable as the support from the local community grows. Um, just like this and helps to foster more bold and empowered and just brave activists. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to save to everyone involved and congratulations to my fellow uh, recipients tonight. Well, thank you so very, very much, um, Marky. This is um, really a special award for us. Um, I, I should say Sister Rosine and myself as Sylvania Franciscans who love nature, who believe as St. Francis did that all creatures are sister and brother to us. There's a special uh, place in our hearts for the Lake Erie Bill of Rights, that's for sure. So we're, we're rooting behind you, believe me. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Our uh, next award is the Eco School Award uh, Elementary um, Division. Um, and this award goes to Sherry Dower, uh, the director of the, um, uh, uh, excuse me, the kindergarten. As I read over the uh, remarks that she had um, written for, about herself, I was really quite taken aback because it brought me back to my own childhood. And I, I believe that many of us probably had the same experience. Um, that last day of school at the end of May or early June, you kicked off your shoes, you ran out the door, and the shoes didn't go back on until uh, <laughs> end of August, early September, when um, you had to go back to school. And what she's being able to do in her forest time uh, kindergarten is that experience, but as a school experience, it was very, very exciting to read about. Um, well, Sherry has um, a, a great background in forest time education and believes that children can learn so very, very much through experience directly from nature. Uh, currently, she's um, uh, uh, working to, uh, well, she has a level one and level two early education um, uh, certification of the um, a forest time education and is working toward to complete level three um, uh, at this time. Uh, the forest classes are held almost exclusively outside and the children are encouraged to learn through their great um, a tool of play. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful experience. We are so happy to give this award to you, uh, Sherry Dower. And is Sherry here to say a few words? I am, thank you very great. much. Great. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for recognizing Forest Time Kindergarten. I feel very honored that that you recognized us and then also were, that we are awarded. Um, we truly love having children outside and we have children ages three to eight that come one to three mornings a week and learn math, English, so social studies, science and history 
but they do it through play and being outside. So thank you so much. I'm excited that other people are excited about the environment. Our motto at Forest Time is love yourself, love others, and love the earth. So between all those things, hopefully this next generation of children will grow up and do great things. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for all that you do. Um, it truly is exciting and, and just really thrilling that we can put a love of nature into uh, up and coming generations. So thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, our next awardee is at a meeting right now. So he'll be back a little bit later, about 7.15. Um, so he'll be able to connect with us. So um, we are going to... Um, uh, do the Eco Community Award uh, next. Okay, thanks, John. And I guess I'm the one who is uh, explaining this award. Uh, this is another award that I found very, very exciting as I was putting together the booklet. It was thrilling to read all of these wonderful stories. And the story of um, Amanda's a journey uh, to establish the Hooves program was absolutely thrilling. Um, as I read and, and as I looked at her website, the um, amount of growth that she uh, came to uh, through her experience with, the, with um, horses was absolutely amazing. Um, it's a story of deep, deep love, deeply sorrow, deeply deep uh, held pain, uh, but tremendous growth through it all, uh, through the um, animal kingdom. Um, the Hooves program uh, now offers a four day retreat uh, with hands-on learning to help the veterans work through uh, uh, all the conditions that they are facing down. Uh, it helps them to um, break down emotional barriers, to build connections and to ignite self-awareness uh, so that they can uh, lead a new and whole life. Um, it is just exciting. We're so happy to be able to uh, share this award with you, Amanda. Uh, would you like to say a few words to us, please? Oops. Oh. And I guess we don't have a Amanda here, but anyway. Um, Amanda's program is absolutely wonderful. It has been since um, uh, 2011 uh, that it's been a breakthrough program for veterans who are seeking to transform their lives uh, in order to heal, to regain control, and to move forward with purpose, passion, and peace of mind and peace of heart. Um, she's done wonderful things with helping people um, who are suicidal, uh, being able to change their minds and hearts and come to find a meaning, a meaningful life within themselves uh, through the uh, love of the animals. So thank you very much, Amanda. Um, our next award is the Eco Educator Award, uh, which goes to Cody Mernon and uh, David um, Asabsak will give us an explanation of the award and our award winner. David? <coughs> Yes, I uh, spent a little time myself doing some consulting work with the um, Westside Montessori School System and uh, really appreciate the great people that are there. I never had a chance to meet Cody uh, and never had a chance to ask him if he is a relation to a man I went to high school with named Mike Mernon. Uh, but he is the outside education coordinator, which is a rather, rather unusual uh, position for a school. And uh, it's a brand new program there. He's helping to develop that and develop the curriculum for the students who range in age from, get this, 13 months to 11th <laughs> uh, to eighth grade. So that's a wide span of uh, age group of students. Uh, he's also in charge of the composting program there. And he's learned a great deal by associating with other organizations in our community like the Nature Conservancy, the Lucas uh, Soil and Water Conservation District, the Metro Parks, and Nature's Nursery. He's a huge advocate of environmental stewardship and sustainability to the point where his bicycle is his main mode of transportation that is really dedicating to the cause. 
Uh, he is constantly looking for ways to make impact on the earth as minimal as possible. Uh, I introduce Cody Mernon, who's receiving this wonderful award for the eco educator in elementary school systems. Cody, would you like to comment at all? Um, sure. I am extremely grateful and really humbled by this award. Um, I wake up every day just enjoying my job so much. The, the little kids who I get to teach about the environment and the amount of joy that I get to see them go through is really fun. And to be a part of a big group like this has been really inspiring. So it's all just been kind of a whirlwind since this all started. Um, I kind of started my career in Toledo. So going to the University of Toledo, I studied environmental science and my passion for the environment just took off from there. I got really involved with a lot of gardens around the city and um, all sorts of activism. So since then, I just want to ensure everyone I'm doing the most I can to, to change the pace of things and try and help not only our generations, but the future generations who are going to be taking over everything that we're kind of leave them. So thank you. And congratulations to everyone else who's here tonight. You guys are all awesome. And I'm, like I said, I'm really humbled by all your presence. Thank you very much. That's yes. great. Okay. Thank you so much, David, it's, uh, for introducing. And we ask you now to introduce our Eco Educator Award. Um, and uh, uh, <clears throat> this is for the um, higher ed. David? Yeah. Elliot Tramer is uh, not able to be here tonight. He is caught in air traffic uh, somewhere. Um, and he apologized for not being able to attend. But as I read the news, I understand there's a lot of uh, confusion out there in the airline industry and delivery of service. But uh, Dr. Tramer was a professor at the University of Toledo for 38 years, started out in biology, and then became the founding director of an undergraduate program in environmental sciences, he now, which now serves more than 150 majors. So the program has expanded dramatically. He's published more than 60 scientific papers and written several books. Maybe perhaps you've seen the one. It was a featured in the uh, Toledo Blade some time ago called Richness and Rarity, the Natural History of Lucas County. And uh, that is a, a very interesting text. And it was co-joined uh, by uh, Art Weber of the Metro Park. So it's a pretty uh, conclusive and comprehensive book. Um, He's received a number of different awards over his lifetime. He lives right here in, in White House, so he's uh, close to the community. And I would like to congratulate him on the reception of the Higher Education Echo Education Award. Thanks, David. I'd also like to share that um, <clears throat> Dr. Dr. Tramer uh, wrote a little bit about what he wanted to say to us tonight. Um, he shared with me that, um, he believes that his teaching was motivated by two things, his love of nature. Um, he believes that he truly had a calling to share that with others. And secondly, his realization that the human enterprise was utterly dependent on achieving a sustainable balance with the natural world. Um, after retirement, uh, he wants that uh, calling to continue. Um, as reflected in his book on our local natural history. Uh, he thanks Say for honoring his efforts and is truly grateful uh, for the uh, work that we do, as we are very, very grateful for the work that you do, Dr. Tramer. Um, thank you so very, very much. Our next award is actually our newest award. Um, as the SAVE board has been uh, looking over and growing and expanding over the years, um, we've come to realize that we needed to add one more element um, to the awards that are, were given. Um, for many, many years, we've been working on the, uh, uh, the uh, ideals that were presented by the Earth Charter, as well as the, in the UN sustain, excuse me, Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and realize that so much of what we do 
affects such a, a greater um, sense of the world um, and that there are many, many people out there who are doing many, many things, not necessarily connected with the environment, but that have a tremendous impact on all of us. And uh, the interlocking elements of each of our actions is so very, very important. And so we developed this community building award. Um, Sister Rosine is going to explain who is getting our very first inaugural award. Uh, synonymously, two things happened. Uh, I was reading Mary Alice Powell's Sunday, I think it was Sunday Blade article on the Toledo Buffalo Soldiers and how enamored she was with all the things that the Buffalo Soldiers did. And I, I, I guess sensed her enthusiasm. And when this came up about community building and how we bridge environment and societal issues, I thought, this is it that we got to get these people uh, to get this award. So um, th like Sharon said, this is our, our first one, but it just was it just was perfect timing that Mary Alice wrote about it and uh, wrote about them and uh, it, it went from there. Uh, some little history here, the Toledo Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club represents a rich history and legacy of the United States Army Cavalry. Cavalry and infantry regiments enacted in 1866 after the Civil War and later nicknamed the Buffalo Soldiers. First detailed to protect settlers moving westward, they also served as the first National Park Rangers and distinguished themselves in both Worlds War I and II. They were some of the most decorated soldiers of their time, receiving 23 Congressional Medals of Honor. The spirit of the Buffalo Soldiers from 80, 1866 to 1948 lives on today in the various forms of community service across the nation, <coughs> excuse me, that the Buffalo Soldiers are involved in. Uh, they represent an awesome history. Today, the Buffalo Soldiers participate and conduct many, many community service projects, of which I'd like to mention a few. Uh, they conducted what to do when stopped by police work. They developed workshops. They conducted safe and secure workshops. Uh, they adopted the Wilson Park, adopted Ella P. Stewart Academy for Girls, adopted Martin Luther King Jr. Academy for Boys. So we're sexist on both sides. That's good. Uh, mm -hmm. Operation Shut In, a Veterans Day meal program partnering with the American Red Cross and other organizations, helping fire victims of the Tanglewood apartment complex, partnering with the Rotary Club of Toledo's Peace, Peace Initiative. They believe collaborative, genuine collaboration and partnership with public and private sectors are a key to developing a community of peace and a safer neighborhood for all. So I'd like to congratulate this whole group excuse me, of uh, Buffalo Soldiers, and Earl and anybody else who's going to speak for them, please do so. Well, we, we first really thank you uh, and really a, a appreciate the recognition. Uh, as you say, we, we do a lot of work and, and, and some of the people that are on with us is, 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 uh, is members from our post in California. Uh, you'll see uh, Kenneth Cole there and and, 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 and we call uh, uh, old school, which, which, is, which are both in California. We, we're looking at, at, at folks that's, that's out of Georgia. Uh, we have uh, Code Blue uh, that's, that's here. We have uh, uh, Miss Mel is, is in Florida right now. She, she, she's on with us and, and she's our vice president. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, Lorinda McKayla, who is our treasurer that's up there, Fred the Fever. And, Sure, you guys know Fred. He's our secretary and PIO uh, that is with us as well. We had uh, Trinidad. Trinidad is, is out of Maryland. She she's on with us as well. Uh, we we have uh, uh, and I, I mentioned Highway uh, Trinidad pa Passion. Uh, we have our our, our newest uh, uh, Pittsburgh Post uh, that's on with us as well. And and I hope I didn't I didn't for, uh, for forget anybody. We have. Uh, my, my lovely wife uh, that is labeled as user and she helps me do all all the things 
and the Buffalo soldiers do, do all the things that, that we do administratively as, as well. We have our PIO guy down there, Fred the Fever. Fred, uh, I would love for you to have a couple of words, please, sir. Good. Welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, let me just say that the organization, uh, in hearing some of the other speeches, um, when it comes to the environment, uh, one of the things that we have done over the last few years, and you mentioned Wilson Park, uh, has adopted Wilson Park and returned it to the people in the neighborhood. For a long time, the city had the shelter house locked up, it was unusable to the people who actually you know, pay the taxes and live in the neighborhood for it. We made sure that they have now received the keys to it uh, and have access to that. We've done a number of events there. Uh, when we are out there, we, we monitor the park and, and make sure that it's clean. Anytime there's an event out there, we make sure that uh, uh, folks who are holding those events, basketball tournaments, baseball, football, whatever might be happening, neighborhood events, uh, that the park is also cleaned up. Uh, so our part of the environment goes back uh, quite a ways, uh, all the way to uh, Charles Young, who was the first African-American superintendent of national parks. And he, along with the Buffalo Soldiers at the time, created a number of roads that are still in use today in the national parks out west. It's a deep and rich history, our ties with the environment. Mm -hmm. Th thanks, Red. And, and, and then Ms. Mel, which, which is our vice, uh, uh, our vice commander here of the, of the Toledo Post, and she's in Florida. Ms. Mel, please. Oh, she, she, you gotta unmute yourself. <laughs> there you go. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for this award. Um, I feel grateful, humbled by it, and especially to be the first ones to receive it. Um, so we will continue to do um, good in the community. And as you've all mentioned, the environment is so important also to the youth. So again, thank you so much and congratulations to all. Right, Th thanks Ms. Mill and I, and I, I apologize. I, 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 one of our founders, which is Highway, Highway uh, is out in California. Uh, Highway, uh, just a couple of words, sir. Well, uh, I am very gracious um, for this award. Um, Toledo itself uh, has really uh, stepped up uh, and particularly the post there in Toledo, Ohio. Um, I had became aware of that post some years ago in my travels and visiting, uh, and they've lived up to uh, anyone's expectations and what I've been trying to do uh, in, the, in the last year, year and a half. Uh, Toledo has done so much for their community that every opportunity that I get, uh, I like to make it known throughout uh, the United States of the progress, the different events, the different accomplishments and how uh, they are helping uh, the city in its own. So thank you very much. Uh, it makes me very proud and I'll continue in supporting uh, their activities there in Toledo, Ohio. And, 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 and just my last one, and, and I'll be remiss, is, is, uh, is, uh, would, would be old school. He, he's, out, he's out of our California uh, area as well, and he's one of our co founders. Old school. He, he may not be there. Okay, well, well, well without. Are you there? Okay. Old school. I think he's muted. Okay, yeah, it looks like he is. All right. Well, once uh, and 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 I won't uh, prolong it again. Thank you, thank you, thank you much, and we appreciate the recognition uh, of all the work uh, that that we do. And uh, and uh, and one of the things that that we always talk about uh, in in our in our violence um, in in our vi we uh, we call ourselves violence interrupters as well. Uh, in working with with our children and making sure that they have those positive experiences with each other, because those positive experiences build build relationships. Those relationships uh, 
then build friendships as well. And you, we find that bullying and, and youth violence starts to drop. So, and I think that that helps our environment a lot. So anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for this award. Great. Old school is that? Oh, old school, okay. Uh, Earl, can you tell us about uh, what the backgrounds of these people were before they became Buffalo Soldiers? Oh, we we had, we'll, we'll be here all night. We, uh, we, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> we, we, we have some outstanding, some awesome, awesome backgrounds. And um, uh, as you know, I, I was once the, the uh, deputy director of Ohio Homeland Security, uh, 40, uh, almost 40 years of law enforcement. Uh, and uh, when we have military people here who have, who have uh, retired from our military, um, uh, uh, old school, where, where, where are you, old school? Can, uh, old school, uh, unmute yourself. I'm right here. Yeah, so I retired. <laughs> I retired after 30, in 2018, I retired after 33 years of service for the United States Army. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and you heard Highway, Highway uh, uh, retired as a, as a long, lots of years of, 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 a, of a correction officer in law enforcement. Uh, you have uh, um, Law Dog at the top, John Pitts. John, just tell a little bit about yourself. He's, he's, he's retired military as well. well I'm mil a military and also law enforcement retired in uh, 2010 out of DEA and uh, finished up with the VA as a criminal investigator. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then we have Cole Blue down there out of our Georgia um, uh, post. Uh, yes, I, I went short of 25 years in the military. Right now I'm, uh, I work for the military as a uh, sexual assault coordinator. And I heard you had uh, uh, one additional advocate on here. So I uh, applaud you and all your efforts. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, Lorinda. Lorinda was on also. Lorinda, does she have anything to say? She 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 don't like talking. Oh, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 she's she she she's a, a government worker as well. If you if you travel the turnpike and if you get off at think it's exit fifty nine, you will see her uh, do, during during the daytime. So she's mm -hmm. uh, uh, she's a long time government worker as well. Uh, and as I say, we, we have, Paul, uh, you know, Paula Hits Hudson, Paula Hits Hudson, sure. uh, we, we, we call her legal ego. She, she, she's our, <laughs> she's our, she's our, uh, our legal <laughs> advisor. She just started riding a bike as well. She, she, she we, we just put her on a spider. As a matter of fact, Fred Lefebvre down there, he didn't tell uh, a lot about himself. He just purchased a motorcycle as well. Fred, come on, just, just give them a little bit about you. <laughs> Uh, I'm a 40 year, uh, 41 year plus resident of Toledo. I moved here in 1980, uh, put in a number of years, about 20 some years at uh, KISS FM. And I'm currently the host of the morning show on 1370 uh, WSPD. Almost all the members of the club have either law enforcement or military background. Um, and they have that, uh, like a lot of you, they have that need to serve the community. Uh, which is what made it so attractive to me because they all want to get out there and continue to serve in one way or another after they retire. Uh, Ms. Mel, for instance, uh, actually worked in the parks uh, here in the state park system. So as I said earlier, our ties to what you folks are doing on a regular basis go pretty deeply. And we That's really fun. appreciate this. Mm -hmm. right. and Ms. Mel as well is, is a retired deputy sheriff of, uh, of Franklin County. Uh, we have Trinidad. Tr Trinidad just retired from the military. Trinidad, are, are you on? She, she may not. She may not be there. Okay. And 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 and, and uh, who who else is on there? I'm I'm looking at that Nancy. Okay. Well, Pennsylvania. We, uh, Pennsylvania. Oh. Where where are you? I can't hear. Okay. Well, we we won't prolong it. Uh, but but we have we have some very upstanding people uh, that that are in this or organization uh, that help us across this country and particularly in uh, in the Toledo and Lucas County area do what we do. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you for for this award. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Well, Earl, you 
You had asked me uh, before if you could invite other people uh, and uh, to speak, et cetera. And you have done a marvelous job expressing or, or contacting people, expressing, letting them express with, where they're at. So we not only had the Toledo, you know, focused on the Toledo area, but, uh, you know, I just see now the big, big event, the biggest uh, focus is across the country. And that is really marvelous for all the things that you you folks have done. It's, uh, it's truly the the bestest, bestest, rightest, rightest award that we could ever uh, give a, a group of people. And that we're happy to give it to you. So congratulations to all of you people that are involved with the Buffalo Soldiers, as well as the other um, uh, awardees tonight. Yes. Well, and I, I just like to say again, thank you, thank you, thank you to you, Earl. Um, you certainly uh, help in so many ways. Um, SAVE really has two main uh, avenues um, to, to what we do, to what we believe. One is both the moral and the spiritual uh, aspects of uh, environmental uh, work. And the second is our deep held belief that we will not have a healthy planet unless we have healthy people and healthy communities. And you and the uh, Toledo Buffalo Soldiers and all of the uh, Buffalo Soldiers certainly help that happen. So what a wonderful, wonderful example of the um, uh, first award E for this uh, wonderful award. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Yes. Did Brian come in yet? Well, I, um, I am here. Oh, okay. great. Wonderful, Brian. Um, <clears throat> Nancy, I believe you are going to explain um, the uh, horticultural program uh, as the awardee of the Eco School Award. Nancy? Yes. Um, Brian, we're so happy you joined us. It's an honor to introduce you as instructor of Sylvania School's horticulture program. The program has earned SAVE's Eco School Award secondary level. And Brian has been the instructor for the horticulture program at Southview High School for the past five years. And growing up, he spent his summers, not barefoot probably, but working for the Sylvania Conservation Corps where he gained a wealth of skills, both botanical and leadership management. He then went on to secure a college degree and a full-time position as a sports turf manager with Sylvania Recreation. Brian realized as the culture of work has shifted alongside technology, young adults are discouraged from manual labor positions. With his present position, he saw an opportunity to help the Sylvania community and green industry leaders with qualified employees both during and after high school. The, the Sylvania Schools Horticulture Program was started in 1976, so it's been around a while. The focus is to assist students in obtaining a career in the agricultural field with a purposeful education. It gives students the opportunity to participate in a multifaceted program by providing internships or work experience in their specific area of interest. And of course, the primary emphasis is instruction with hands-on projects for conservation. Some examples of what the students are doing with Brian's guidance and expertise are, they do collect rainwater to grow crops in the greenhouses for resale in the springs. Students are also creating a compost site which will provide soil to community vegetable gardens. And the horticulture program has partnered with Silverback Supply and Ergo Can, creating a recycling program at Southview High School. I think these are pretty exciting times for with when talking to Brian, it sounds like these are pretty exciting times for the horticulture program as they have so many things happening. And as they engage in more community involvement with an emphasis on conservation and sustainability. 
So congratulations to the Sylvania Schools Horticulture Program and instructor, Brian Smith. Turning it over to you, Brian. Thank you so much, Nancy, and everyone that's in this meeting. I, I truly appreciate um, being recognized. Um, and it's really not me, it's my students and what they've put in. Um, I'm here to guide them and they have taken the education and have ran with these um, ideas. Um, the three ideas that you have mentioned um, were student ideas and they put all the effort into it um, to make sure that we are um, practicing uh, these conservative practices um, to help our environment. And um, at this time, we are looking at possibly growing vegetables for our, um, our school system to help um, be able to provide resources to our students that may be in need. And um, we're just continuing to grow. And with all of the support from you guys and um, the partnerships that we have gained over the many years, um, we look forward to continuing um, with, with all of these great ideas, uh, helping our, our community, especially in Sylvania, but grow it further out into outlining areas, doing whatever we can to help the environment. Mm -hmm. okay. all right. well, thank you. Brian. Um, Brian, I have a question. I'm curious. Can you give us an idea what happens um, with some of your students after they graduate from your program? Yeah, um, I've got students going from military to environmental engineering um, to getting doctorates in veterinary and science. I do pretty much everything here. Um, you know, the one great thing about Sylvania schools is that we're a comprehensive district, which means we have all of our career tech programs here at a high school. They are not shipped out to a career center where they are gone for four and a half um, you know, hours a day and away from their friends. So I get a lot of students that like the environmental pathway, but not necessarily always you know, going into the um, greenhouse growing or landscape business. We have a lot of different avenues that these students go through because of the pathways that we offer here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty exciting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, well, I'm wondering, if, uh, Sharon, if uh, mm -hmm. Amanda came in yet from Hooves? Uh, yes, I, I'm here. I don't know okay. if you can hear me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, wonderful. Sorry, we had some technical difficulties with our internet. <laughs> okay. Well, Amanda, um, we uh, gave a little introduction to your, to your program, but um, I, I told about how absolutely thrilled I was as I put together the booklet and read about your group and would love to hear a little bit more from your point of view about the good that you do and the um, wonderful program that you have established. If you uh, would like to give us, give us a few words, please. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you guys so much. It was such an honor and a wonderful surprise to receive this award. We're super grateful. Uh, we have been around since 2011. Um, I founded the program originally with my father, and I now run it with my husband, Justin, who's here with us. And so it's a very unique program, but we enlist these horses that have been rescued to interact with the veterans on the ground. So there's no riding involved. And what the horses do is through the use of mirror neurons, they read the body language of the individuals in the group and they begin to respond to um, and reflect their emotions and, and the things that are going on inside the person. So a lot of times people will say, it's like this horse is role-playing my life. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, and just to give you a little context, like we'll say, we'll give them an exercise to do, like uh, get the horse to follow you for one lap around the pen. And so if they're showing up in life and they're not being authentic and congruent, um, the horse will kind of not connect with them or turn away. So we had a guy uh, that was trying to connect with this horse and he was, getting frustrated and he was like, you know, I don't understand why you won't just cooperate. I'm just trying to do this for both of us. And as he's saying all these things, he stops and he says, oh my gosh, this is what I do to my wife. <laughs> uh, so 
through these interactions, what the veterans gain is self-awareness of how they're impacting others around them, um, maybe how they're feeling inside, but they don't actually have to go into their stories or talk about things that have happened because we are a focus forward program. So they come to the farm and they spend four days interacting with the horses and uh, participating in a lesson plan that I've developed based on post-traumatic growth. So they, they do a total of 12 exercises in a book and then 12 exercises with the horses. And what they gain is real life tools that they can take back and implement to transform their lives and transform their post-traumatic stress. Well, thank you so very, very much. Um, not only for your presentation, but more especially for the wonderful impact that you have on others' lives, bringing them to healing and holy, into um, healing and, um, yeah, I, I will say holiness, if you will, that sense of who they are and the beautiful people that they can become. Um, it is such a gift that you give to, to the veterans. Thank you so very, very much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And um, just so you all know, we're always happy to host meetings or we do farm tours as well. If anyone's interested in coming out and uh, seeing the farm and experiencing what we do. I so, am. <laughs> yep. well, great. Yeah. Sounds like a great retreat idea, Rosine. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yes. great. Yeah. Oh, yes. And uh, one thing that my husband did bring up that I forgot to mention is that the the programming provided is always provided at no cost to the veterans and their oh, family members. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. fabulous. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Well, and thank you all. This has been just a wonderful, wonderful gathering tonight. Um, I, I'd like to just let you know that we do have a website, um, uh, <clears throat> a sciencealliancesave.org. And on the website, you'll find a little bit about us and a calendar. Uh, do know that we do have bi-monthly free public lectures on a wide variety of talk topics on an environmental, um, a, a really across the environmental spectrum. And so we do invite you. Our next lecture is November 9th, um, <clears throat> the a Pandemic of Hope with uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Bre Bremer. And he does a, a fabulous job. Um, and so we do invite you um, to that. We also will have since we're recording this today, we will have um, the uh, a recording of this uh, gathering um, on our website. And we also are hopeful that we are, we're planning on having our two, excuse me, 2022 um, uh, award ceremony on May 3rd in person next year. We're, we're hoping that we can do it. We will invite you back um, as well as the uh, 2021 um, uh, awardees so that we can all celebrate together. I wish we could just simply talk at, around the table, share with each other, uh, share our stories and uh, make even more connections than we've made here tonight. Um, this has been just a fabulous, fabulous experience. Thank you all so much. You are all so, so deserving of the awards that you have given. We <clears> wish that we could give you even more, uh, but do know that you will be getting a little certificate and a small token gift um, from us. Uh, so look out for that very, very soon. Mm -hmm. And Rosine, do you have any words that you'd like to offer yeah. in conclusion? I, I just like a couple things. Um, we're going to, it's in the mail, wherever that is. Uh, you're going to get a booklet with all these things that were talked about this evening, but you will also see all the other people that have gotten the awards before you. So I, you know, I'd encourage you to look at that because it's overwhelming. I mean, just to look and say, oh my God, we have all these things happening right here in Toledo with these people that are getting all these awards and everything. Uh, we do spend time as a board looking over the awardees, trying to, uh, to really determine who would be the best one to get it for this year in this in this uh, uh, time? So, uh, and for the people that came on board, like Brian and Amanda, uh, we added a new award this year called the Community Building Award, and that's for someone or group of people that build a community even more broadly than many of us do in whatever else we do. 
Um, also in this booklet, there is a listing, I believe, Sharon, did you put it in there with all the lectures coming up? Yes, the lecture series there. is there. Yes. All right. So all the lectures there, and you can also see that on our website, you'll see them as they come up. But here we've got a nice little um, um, listing of all those, including a person from Scotland who's going to be joining us and telling what they're doing in Scotland. And so we try to incorporate at least, hopefully we're trying to incorporate one international one uh, every year. So that broadens our experience even further. I, I just would personally like to thank all of you for, for coming tonight, for making the, the, the effort to be here uh, to uh, celebrate with all of us uh, and hear each other's stories and hopefully live with that inspiration of all these other people. We link ecology, spirituality, and sustainability in this organization. We've been doing that for 35 some years and we wanna to continue to do that. So we thank you all for coming. We thank you for your time. You've got a whole hour that we are giving you tonight because we didn't know how long this was going to go. So from 6.30 to 7.30, you've joined us. Uh, if anybody has any last minute things they would like to say, please go ahead and, um, and then we'll call it a night. Yes, I would like to throw in the comment that uh, we're always anxious to have new members. And on our website is our membership application. We have only a couple of different ways that we raise funds for our organization. And that is through membership dues, which are extremely nominal. And uh, we sell honey and maple syrup from a local farmer. This is uh, not something that comes from foreign countries. This is honey that comes from a farm nearby and the uh, maple syrup is harvested by an Amish group and it is sold, unfortunately, th and right now we can only sell it through the All Good Things craft shop on the campus of Lourdes University. Normally we would have it available at these events and, and in other public gatherings, um, but uh, you can check that out. That's also on our site. And those are the two means we use to raise the funds for our organization. Mm -hmm. And I hope Amanda won't mind, uh, but uh, she mentioned all the services that they provide are absolutely free to the veterans, uh, but they do do fundraisers, and I'll be emceeing and a host of their annual chili cook-off, which is coming up Saturday, November the 13th, and you can get details on her website about that. It's always a great event, uh, and it's chili from a bunch of different people, so you get a chance to sample a little bit of chili from a lot of folks, have a couple of adult beverages, uh, and help raise funds uh, for the host project. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Fred. I appreciate that. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I would also like to mention that to all our awardees tonight, the booklets um, that have a lot of information about the stories tonight, but also other information, were mailed on Friday. So hopefully you'll be getting them soon this we week. Got our but, today. We got ours today. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. oh. I got mine as well. All wow. right. Okay, good. Because there's a lot of information. I think there's a bit of information, good information in there, plus the, the wonderful stories from all of you. So thank you so much. You will also see the, the uh, children on the back uh, that received awards for their Northwest District Science Day. I'm looking for where, I just saw that somewhere. Um, yes, on the back, N Nash Malcheski, Isabel Marzano, and Brooke Moreland. So we, we normally have them at our annual meeting, but we have already given them their awards and everything. And uh, when did we do that? In um, March, I think was. And so they, they got everything and we thought rather than bringing them all back for this, we just bring back the, the most recent awardees. So um, if you see some names there, you know that they weren't on the program tonight, but they uh, could have been here if we'd invited them. Anything else? I think we should unmute everybody and give everybody a round of applause. Oh, right. Yes. 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 <laughs> well, congratulations to everyone. Thank everyone. you so much for yes, all the congratulations. Good that you do. Yes. Thank you. I just had a Thank quick you.